<clears throat> so what I realized after uh, <laughs> much meditation, because, uh, you know, God says straight up that, you know, on his word meditates day and night, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, so that I can't understand that um, truthfully, uh, analytical minds, my premier or initial target demographic for, uh, or the target demographic of, uh, pay us please, Mr. and Mrs. J, is a bit bony in the sense that it's a bit too narrow. Ergo that I need to kind of have uh okay, I love you. <laughs> uh, I need to have uh demographics that uh include everyone in the way that I intended for each one to resonate with a given uh strata or a given group, as I said before. I kind of understand that in a very unique way, really powerful uh, expression or art really kind of resonates with all, you know, that there's something about it that everyone can relate to. You know, this is why, like, I saw recently a pic of uh, Molly and Arthur from when they were supposed to have been, uh, I think, 18, 17, something like that. And, you know, the fact that you know, so many of the characters in the Harry Potter series kind of uh, met, uh, you know, with a kind of approval in a sense, a kind of uh, welcoming um, attitude uh, on the part of the readers. And what I kind of understand and, you know, appreciate really, um, you, is that straight up, um, I'll tell you that, uh, it's really intrinsically imperative to kind of make that mesh so that analytical thinkers expands into persons who are trying to figure it out. You know, um, analytical thinkers expands into the realm of anyone who kind of has had issues and is just doesn't understand what's happening, you know. Um, in a very sweet way, I have to admit that it's kind of like an exacerbation of its predecessor, which is uh, Ugo Ikara, um, You Shall Hurt No More or Never Happened, where Kara is in agony because of, you know, what's happening with Hugo, or I should say Hugo, we would say Hugo, or, you know, but in, you know, in Espanol, como se dice, hace u... Uh, is it J or something? O. Anyway, you would say Ugo. But anyway, the point I'm making is this. Um, that I'm looking at this sort of spirality. <laughs> That's my word. You know, it could not, it might not be my word, but, you know, I'm using this. Uh, you get my drift. The kind of spirality um, kind of witnessed with the unfolding of every, you know, uh, successive installment in this heptology is really a beauty because of course we're looking at uh you know in lost last a girl that is just trying to kind of do the right thing uh and uh you know thinks that you know she, if she does the right thing that she kind of will have what she needs you know um, she's saying she wanted to honor the Lord, but then, you know, she's having to deal with issues. And it's so many of us as Christians and, you know, just trying to, people just trying to really get, get, get to a space of, you know, knowing even as we are known, which is what Paul was talking about in Corinthians chapter 13, that we kind of expect that, okay, you do this. You serve God, you be committed, your road, your path will be smooth. And it is such a fallacy, because that's why I had to talk about the whole prosperity versus good health thing. Where this is it, you know, uh, 
when we work for our our reward and we you know kind of become prosperous do you know how many fools are prosperous and like are so unhealthy like they have big bellies they just are so unhealthy in other words it's not enough and be in good health even as you're so prosperous that is the sin hey in other words it is so critical to kind of uh, embrace the need to lose right and that when we do that we develop we become really kind of glorified because we become so in control the ultimate fruit of the spirit is self-control as i did share uh in type and so that you know that is where we're all trying to get to self-control is so dynamic it is so much more than just you know self-denial because it's talking about self-control when you're in a space where you have health where you don't have a single problem where you can breathe a breath of air and be so thankful that is a space that you arrive in with self-control because self-control is saying although he slays me yet i will trust him hey k <laughs> yeah self-control is, is 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 you know saying that okay i've served you like job you choose to hurt me, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Y'all need to get with it. Y'all need to get with it. I ain't be lying. So at the end of the day, we have to have that self-control. That is the only thing that really gives us happiness. Because I'm telling you that having prosperity doesn't make you happy. You have to have the health. You have to have the health too. So that being said, there's a... Oh, uh, uh, what's the word? It's kind of like a okay, a mm, development, okay, of that character who we see as as Lady Katrina Davenport in Last Last, into the person that is Kyla, because Lady Katrina, you know, experiences finding Sir Ralph, and um, it's like she starts realizing, okay, so. I worked hard all my life in this way, kind of wanted to honor God, was very committed as a person, and, you know, okay, so now I have Ralph. And this is what Kay taught me, I'm telling you that, you know, it's about, it's not like, okay, so you did all of this, so automatically you think because you did all of this, you're worthy of everlasting life. No. When the rich young ruler came to the Lord, what did he tell him? Okay, he said, first of all, the rich young ruler says, Master, I have kept every commandment since i was born can you can you usher me into your kingdom now what jesus says he says honey honey child that is not enough you need now to go and sell table knock to go and sell all your goods to the poor and come and follow me let me tell you all something this nigga said he wasn't gonna do that and he said he he, he just done turned away yeah he turned away and um, was sad for the rest of his days. And because at the end of the day, having things does not make you happy. I talked about this when I was speaking about, you know, the sexual harassment where some women just be in this fool-ish thing, or er, things, where we, it's like you're just kind of so attracted to money, um, okay, that you would give up your honor. I made that very clear, you know, in terms of my, my kind of, you know outrage at such a philosophy that it is so kind of dunce to think you could find happiness if you have if you have nothing really so that you you having you know suppose you're you know uh you know whatever you have a degree in economics you you're on a let's say a, a uh not even a panel because you'd have to work harder to get there but let's say you have a job where you're um a market statistician something like that what i'm saying is and you lose your job or your boss tells you now okay you gotta do him or some nonsense to continue keeping your job tell the fool this is this let me tell you something this is when you say boy bye okay beyonce this is when you say boy bye because clearly he's a boy he's not a man okay like hey okay he, he really isn't anything like him if this fool is gonna tell you okay that you gotta be i can't even kind of classify i can't even say that in a derogatory enough manner it sucks so my point is this i think you guys are going to really kind of enjoy how katrina grows as she goes along 
from Katrina to Kyla to Kara to Dakota to uh, um, yeah, uh, to Maria to Susie and finally Steph. You're going to be enthralled by it. God bless you all. Amen.